never saw her last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we saw her for a minute, but she's gone again. God bless you, honey. <laughs> you want to say anything now, lady? I did, oh, well, just, good. um. <laughs> Thank you for loving the poor. Thank you for loving the orphans. Thank you for loving Jesus. Well, I love you and I thank you and be blessed because there's a lot of people going to eat a lot of food and be full of Jesus. Oh, thank you so much. Wow, I'm just overwhelmed. Whoosh. <laughs> Ooh. Amen. I have uh, I have one quick thing I want to say. I asked uh, Stacy, I, I asked you and, and Pat last night to pray. Uh, many of you didn't know, and y'all prayed this morning. Samuel, my oldest son, went to, took him to the doctor. He had a breakout on him, and they said it was some rare thing called HSP I'd never heard of. And, uh, and I thought, well, what is that? tax the blood vessels, it could shut the kidneys down, could cause dialysis to have to happen, could cause surgery on the bowel to have to happen, and uh, <laughs> wait a minute now, you ready? We took him to the doctor at 145, his mother took him to, that's his mother, it's my wife right there, the pretty one up here. Yeah. Not all pretty, but the real pretty one right there in the gray suit. Raise your hand, Amber, so they know which one. They're right there. And uh, at 1.45, she took him to the doctor, and the doctor said, uh, it was actually his doctor who saw him, and he said, uh, you mean to tell me yesterday they told him he had the HSP? She said, yes. My wife said, yes. She said, not anymore. <laughs> So I thought, so I thought we might do this. One, two, three, hey! Save me. 
look at my God. My God is a healer. My God is a savior. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. I just want to dance. I don't want to sing. I don't have a clue what to say. I want to dance. i 
Almost everybody's dancing. Cause almost everybody's free. Only we can see your face, see your smile over us. Unseen angels celebrate. Enjoy the play ball. Just get something to wave. If you're wondering theologically what this is, I have no idea. <laughs> but I tell you this, if he likes this, this is bigger. Come on, Lord. Here's your bride. Come on, Lord. She's not sad. She's not She's joyful. Come dance with us, Lord. Play, Tony. Come.
<laughs> Do you like that, Father? Please like it. Here's some more, Lord. Honor to you, Father. Hosanna to you. King, Lord, friend, lover, bridegroom, we worship, we worship, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you, Hosanna. One day the nations will praise you. One day the nations will praise you, Lord. And like a choir around the earth, they will sing Hosanna. 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 Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. We bless you. We praise you. Oh, 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 <laughs> hey. Father, this is all we know how to do. 
You show us more and we'll do it, Lord, but this is all we have. Receive it, Lord. Receive it, Lord. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. Those of you in the balcony, if you've got a banner, come on, start moving it slowly. Say glory. Father, it's your girls. Father, it's your daughters. We're coming into your place of holiness to offer something to you. Lord, we're marching through the front door. Father, we're going into your chamber. We have something for you, Father. Worship for you. We have glory for you.
Lord, we just um, Lord, we thank you that you have received our worship, and in particular, Lord, uh, Lindahl's uh, worship. And um, the thing that I love about prophecy is that it shows us that um, you know that a relationship with God is is just that it's a relationship and that we talk to him and he talks back and that he's a talking God and he talks to us through his word and he speaks through creation and um Linda, I just feel like this is, this is, um, God wants to talk to you and your wife. Can you come over here? Would you mind? Or you go over to her? Pat, you want to come up here? And um, and Lord, is going to use you, the both of you, to break the fear barrier. And the Lord has been testing you in the area of fear. Because there is coming upon the earth days of great fear. And worship is the antidote to fear. And that a people of worship is a people that is walking in faith. Because when they can see God, and when they know God, and when they touch God, they break the fear barrier. And faith begins to flow through worship into the hearts of the people. And, and Lindahl, you have been called to break the fear barrier. And so have you, Autumn. Is it Autumn or Amber? Amber. Oh, I love that name, Amber. Um... That's just an aside. That was for me. <laughs> that, not, I, I, Paul, not the Lord. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> although I'm sure he loves that name too. Uh, but uh, but I, I see that the Lord has been testing you in the area of fear. That he's been testing you. He has been allowing fear to come upon your hearts. And fear to come upon you because, because he's testing your hearts. But this the Lord says. That every time you break the fear barrier. <laughs> You will see a miraculous release of power. And God is going to use you as forerunners to break the fear barrier for the people because both of you are worshipers. Amber, you are a worshiper. Amber, you are a worshiper. God has seen into your heart and he sees the worship that comes out of your heart. And he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. And your worship is a pure worship. There is a purity about you that is so pleased the heart of God. And Amber, the Lord wants you to know that this is a fight that you will win. Because the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you and there is a purity in your heart, a purity of devotion that has so pleased the heart of God. And um, actually, I was going to call, if I ever had another daughter, her Amber, because... Amber was one of the incenses that they used in the Holy of Holies. It was another name for one of those incenses, the Cassia. And, and that there is something about the secret place that you have been called to, very, very secret. And that God has seen the worship that you give him in secret. And he wants to declare it openly. In fact, he's going to not only use you in the secret place, I see you taking the microphone and declaring openly the great things that God has done. And God is going to use you to break fear off of women. I see that God is going to take the very thing that the enemy has struck you with and you are going to break it off, break it off, break it off. And you will have an authority that comes from being tested and that comes from overcoming. And as you overcome, overcomer, Amber the overcomer, and Lindahl, I see that God is taking you and testing you in your heart in the same area, although in different ways. And that as you go through it and you break the fear barrier,
your things off your own life in the, you know, that um, in the secret places when God has been calling you into higher levels and deeper levels and levels of more and you've said, oh Lord, this is enough, this is enough, this is enough. It's almost like when you go into, uh, you know, that river of Ezekiel, it's like becomes almost overwhelming and you want to shrink back, but you are not of those that shrink back. And the Lord says that every time you break the fear barrier, as you did and you passed the test, the Lord saw in your heart that you passed the test. Miracles will flow. And the Lord is going to use you to break forth miracles in the middle of worship. Spontaneously. You will hit those heights of worship. That miracles will flow spontaneously. Nobody will touch them. Nobody will lay hands on them. Nobody will even call out the disease. And angels will come. And you will be a co-laborer with the angels of God. As John was. He said, I am your fellow laborer. That angel said, I am your fellow laborer. And the angels will come and labor with you. And God will send them to bring his healing. And Father, I want to thank you for this couple. That they are going to go throughout the earth. And God, you're going to take them to many nations. And, and there's a calling on your life for nations. And I know that sometimes it is easier to, you know, just take a calling for one nation. But God is going to send you to, to nations. And you are going to be like the spearhead of the arrow. That when you go in, you're going to break something in the heavenlies. Because you have an authority. You have hit a realm of authority in worship because of the secret place in your life. You have hit that realm that God is going to have to send you like a strategic arrow to break open the heavenly so that other, you know, um, parts of the army can draft in behind you. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for what you're going to use them for. And I thank you, Lord, that you have called them not only to be worshipers, but to give a sacrifice of worship. The Lord's going to also teach you not about secrecy, but about sacrifice. I see it's very deep on your life, a calling of sacrificial worship, a Davidic anointing that will not give to the Lord that which costs him nothing. So Father, I pray that you would deepen the understanding of sacrifice in their hearts and in their minds. Lord, and I thank you for Samuel, God, that gives me such pleasure to know what you have done. Not anymore. The doctor said, the doctor said, he doesn't have it anymore. Not anymore. And the Lord says that when you give sacrificially of your time and the things that are most precious to you, you will reap in your generations such riches in the spirit for Samuel and for your other son and for the children that God is give, will give you. The children that God has given you, God will just give you benefit upon benefit upon benefit upon benefit. It is impossible to outgive God. It is impossible. Test him. It's impossible. And the Lord says to you, you have sat here for the last few days and you've smelled a different fragrance. You've experienced a different thing, the Lord says. You've experienced a place that you've longed for. And even as you've sat here, you've been thinking about how in the world could I ever implement this where I'm from? And you said to the Lord, Lord, this is what I hunger for. Lord, this is the direction I wish I could go. But when you think thoughts of home, the Lord says fear comes upon you. Fear of man comes upon you. And fear of the system that is not this direction. But the Lord says, comfort yourself, my daughter, because I will not show you something you can't have. The Lord says further to you to walk carefully before the Holy Spirit. Walk carefully before His Spirit. 
Don't walk in rebellion. Don't be unsubmitted. Walk in perfect harmony with the authority placed in the house. And if you will, says the Lord, I will either change the hearts of those in authority or I will remove those in authority. For this is not something that man desires, says the Lord. Don't think of yourself so highly, says the Lord, that you've had such a lofty thought of my glory. For the Lord says, the glory, my glory has been at the thoughts and at the intents of my heart since the beginning of creation. I have had the glory, my glory at my thoughts from the beginning and I do all things for my glory. For I have placed this within you, says the Lord, for you to nurture and birth it. The Lord says, I have brought you to this place for a seed to be planted within you. For a seed to be planted within you. For in not many days, says the Lord, I am going to birth my glory in strategic areas across the nation. In the nations of the world. And the Lord says... The Lord says the germination will not be many days. But the Lord says don't miscarry it. The Lord, I hear the word, I hear a word of warning saying this. Do not miscarry this, says the Lord. Do not mistake this. Walk in perfect harmony with authority, says the Lord. Work, walk in perfect harmony with authority. And just as Mary the mother of Jesus, hid these things in her heart. So the Holy Spirit says to you, my bride, hold these things that I've placed in your heart this week and watch as you carry them, just as you would carry a child. Watch it grow. Watch it grow. And the Lord says, I am preparing a great raising up of my glory. My glory will rise my glory will rise. And the things that you thought are just petty, says the Lord. The things that you thought are too small, says the Lord. Your thoughts are too small, says the Lord. You're hoping your church will change. But the Lord says, I'm about to change nations. 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 Nations and races, says the Lord. For a great troubling, for a great troubling is coming. A great troubling, a great fear, a great darkness is coming. A great uncertainty and upheaval. But those of my daughters that carry my glory, says the Lord, will not walk in fear, but will walk in perfect peace. They will walk in peace. And the Lord says, don't worry, honey. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't even let your mind be... Oh, the Holy Spirit says this to you. Be careful to disengage your thoughts at the appropriate time. I don't know why I'm saying this. This is not even a conference I'm speaking at, but the Lord says this. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, you'll sit right there in the middle of this meeting and think God out of the equation. The Lord says, I don't need your strength. The Lord says to you, I am God all by myself. I don't need, oh, this is a strong one. I don't need your manipulation. I don't need you to go home, says the Lord, and deal with this situation with manipulation. The Lord says it will bring displeasure to me and you will sense my glory depart from you. But the Lord says you walk in humility and you walk in fear of me and watch what I will do. And the Lord, the Lord says the days of crying will end. The days of crying will end. The weeping will turn into laughter. The weeping, for the Lord says I've seen the loss. I've seen the pain, I've seen the hurt, and I've heard the, every tear that's fallen and splashed on the floor. The Lord says, I've heard it.
And I've captured it, the Lord says. And I will turn your mourning into laughter. I will turn... Just as a woman in delivery... In much fear and in much pain births a child in much misery and many tears. After the birthing has happened, the tears turns to joy. The Lord says, I will turn. You will leap like a deer. You will dance like the fawn across, across the across the meadows of clover. You will sit by the peaceful stream because my glory is coming, says the Lord. <laughs> Who's got this? Let there be glory and honor and praise. Glory. Do you feel that? It's His glory. It's here. Come on. Glory. Honor. Glory. Glory. Oh, come on. Focus, focus, focus. Let there be glory and honor and praise. I don't know what key I'm in. Y'all need to join me. Glory and honor to Jesus. Glory. Honor. One more time. We're going to raise an anthem in here. Glory.
sits upon the throne worthy of honor and glory and power forever and ever and ever and ever worthy are you most high God worthy are you Lamb of God who sits upon the throne to receive honor and glory honor and glory forever and ever 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 Worthy, we cry, worthy, we cry, worthy. omnipresent forever and ever and ever and ever and ever Shabbat Shalom 
holy, holy, holy. I just, I just, I just can't move out of this place. Um, I just, I just can't move out of this place right now. I just believe we're, we're just to lift up our worship. Just lift it up. Just love him. However you, however you want to love him. You can, you can sing, you can dance, you can scream, you can laugh, you can cry. You can hug someone, whatever, whatever way you have to worship. Him who sits upon the throne, he's worthy. He's altogether worthy. And as we have discerned the times and he's spoken to us about the times that are to come, which other nations have faced for generations. The Lord, the Lord is worthy to be worshiped in the midst of the fire. And the Lord will stand with you in the midst of the fire. And the Lord will stand with his church in the midst of the fire. And the Lord will stand with his bride in the midst of the fire. And the fire will blaze and the fire will burn. Whoa! And there will be, whoa! There will be great mourning and destruction. Whoa! But he is worthy to be worshipped in the midst of the fire. He is worthy to be worshipped in the midst of the storm. And as you offer up a sacrifice of holy, extravagant worship, your king, your bridegroom king, wow, will hold you in his embrace. And you will know protection. And you will know kindness. And you will know comfort. Wow! The Lord is saying that he longs to swallow you up inside his huge heart. And inside of his heart, you will be protected. Wow! Wow! And death has no sting anymore. <laughs> Holy! It's graduation. Ultimate protection. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Rabashete to Rabasi. O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord. God, Lord, we we want to say now, Lord, that we cannot go unless you go before us, Lord. We will not and cannot go unless you go before us, Lord. So God. Here we are, your people. Here we are, your people loving you and laying down and saying that you are altogether holy and pure and righteous and kind and justice. You are altogether all that we need. But Lord, we say even now that we will not go unless you go before us, Lord. And we want to go. We do, Lord. We want to go. We want to go into this place, Lord, of harvest. We want to go into this place of intimacy, Lord. But God, we need more of you. Lord, so I ask tonight, God, Lord, even as, even Lord, as I share, Lord Jesus, just from, from your glorious, glorious word, 
Lord Jesus. Take us deeper, Jesus. Take us deeper. Take us deeper. Would you just take us deeper, Lord, and swallow us up. Swallow us right up inside your heart. Oh, God, until we're not even seen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> holy, holy, holy. Wow. 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 Kura <laughs> Baba. Well. <laughs> Oh, more, Lord. We love your presence. Don't you love his presence? Oh, just more, Lord. Just more, more, more. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. <laughs> more, Lord. Just pour out your glory. Pour out your glory, Lord. Pour out your presence, God, upon your people. Lord, until they're so heavy with your glory lord so heavy with your glory lord that they cannot stand any longer lord that they cannot do their own thing any longer lord so they can't fuss and fume any longer lord and they can't compare any longer lord and they can't be judgmental any longer who <laughs> whole lot of glory, Lord. Even more, even more, even more, even more. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, that heavy, weighty glory, Lord. Pour out the heavy, 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 heavy duty, heavy duty, heavy weighty glory, Lord. Pour out the kabod on your people until they just can't do it themselves anymore <laughs> incapacitate them god incapacitate these people so they're unable to do their own thing anymore <laughs> You have such a great way of doing it, Lord. Would you please, would you please, would you please send the heavy, weighty glory, God, upon those, Lord, you're calling to carry it. Oh, he's calling many of you. Oh, he's calling you to carry the glory, to carry the glory, to carry the glory. I see it again. I see it again. I see it again. He showed me. He showed me, showed me the chariots are going forth. He's looking for those who will carry his glory and not touch it. His heavy, weighty glory is falling upon many of you. It's his heavy, weighty glory. And it is, it is ra-ba-ba-ba for you to carry out, to carry out, to carry out, to carry out these stars. The heavy, weighty glory of the Most High God. He's calling you to carry it out. It's his love. It's his mercy. It's his compassion. His glory, his glory, his glory it doesn't just look like a cloud but his glory his glory looks like love his glory looks like compassion his glory looks like mercy poured out on a broken world and the Lord's pouring out his glory and his presence upon you now and holy 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 if you will lay low if you will lay low if you will lay low then God will pick you up and pour you out Rabashe. if you will lay low if you will lay low he'll pick you up he'll pick you up he'll pour you out he'll paint a picture he'll paint a glorious picture with your little life oh he'll paint a picture he'll paint a beautiful picture oh he's looking he's looking for a resting place will it be you <laughs> He's looking for a resting place. Will it be you? Shabba, Baba. Wow. 
Shababa. No, make yourself at home. Just make yourself at home. Oh, please don't. Don't do something silly and, and leave this place. Well, make yourself at home. <laughs> That's what I hear the Lord say, make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. Come on home. Come on, come on home. This is where you're meant to be. Home. <laughs> home. 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 Home is where his heart is. Shabba Baba. Home is where his heart is. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Come on home. <laughs> Ooh. Sha -ba -ba -ba. Okay. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> He's doing it. <laughs> Whoosh. Ba 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 ba. She ba ba ba. <laughs> oh, please. Get them all. Just get them all, get them all, get them all, get them all. <laughs> oh, Shabba, welcome home, welcome home, welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> welcome, welcome home. Welcome home, welcome home. <laughs> Whoosh. Time to come home. I don't know. Show. Uh, well, whoosh. <clears throat> Whoa. Help me, Jesus. Lord, I just want to live inside your heart, and I ask you, Jesus to take these precious ladies, God, and the brave men that are here home. <laughs> right into your heart, Lord, just do it tonight. God, we really wanna live there because Lord, when, we, when we're in the center of your heart, God, we will so absolutely be so abandoned that we'll do anything, we'll go anywhere, We'll say anything, wow, anytime. <laughs> wow, and we'll even be happy about it. Shoo. <laughs> ah, holy, well, I'm undone again, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, I'm so undone. <laughs> but you're so good, and I love you so much. And I, uh, I love, I just love making myself at home, Lord, in your presence. I really do. Wow. What a relief. What a huge relief to be in this place, God. And <laughs> what a relief. You do all the stuff and we just we just get to we just get to be wow little children Lord in love protected <laughs> wow <laughs> okay okie dokie <laughs> Here we are. Okay. <laughs> okay. All righty. I'm just, if you're wondering, I'm just wondering too. 
I just, you know, I decided that, uh, whoosh, I would just wait and, and, uh, and I'd listen and I'd hear and then that's what I'd say. So, wow, I like it better that way. Cause, wow, I wanna, wow, I didn't like the way it used to be. <laughs> it was so hard. Oh man. Huh. Huh. <laughs> okay. <sighs> the whole book's good, so I just <laughs> really. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. Open it anywhere. It's it's just so great. I believe it all too. You know. Whoosh. I I um Wow. I like to watch it happen now. <laughs> Who? I used to say I believed it all, but I didn't get to see it. Now I get to see it. <laughs> That's neat. What do you think? <laughs> I'm happy. Who? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to say something and and ew. nice flowers and ferns and things around and we don't have ferns and flowers we just have dirt so this is a new experience carpet and silk flowers and oil and tissue and stuff we don't have any of this so, so we wow okay I'm gonna tell you something you could be, if you were me, you could be stressed. <laughs> Guess what happened to me? <laughs> I came home. <laughs> and I got... I got, I got, I got, I got wrecked, and um, I don't know, I don't know why God chooses to use foolish things, but whoosh! <laughs> oh, me Jesus, help me Jesus. <sighs> I, 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 I thought, I had this thought, you know, I don't know where it went. <laughs> but, okay. <clears throat> Okie dokie. It's really <laughs> What's happening now? Okay, I'm gonna tell you that I I I used
used to stress a lot about what to preach on, and, 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 and I carried a whole suitcase full of books. <laughs> and I spent, I spent 10 years to get a PhD in systematic theology. I did, and it's from an Ivy League school. And if they saw me now, they'd take it away. <laughs> just... Shabba, I heard, you know, <laughs> I always hear these precious women and stuff, God doesn't need your education, you know, and I think, oh God. <laughs> Any, 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 any whoosh, he just, he just, he just, he just, he's just God, and you're not, and you, and you're not smart, <laughs> and you're not wise, and you're not well learned, <laughs> but he is all of the above, cho, and, you know, if I saw someone doing this, I might walk out. So if you, if you, if I almost did, I'll tell you a story. Oh! <laughs> hmm. Okay. What happened? I was very, I was a miserable missionary. And, uh, woo, -woo I love Jesus. I was a radical Pentecostal little girl from the age of 16. I, let, I, I, went, woo, I saw visions and I had dreams and I ran for Jesus and I was, I was running, running, running for Jesus and I wanted him more than life and I served him with everything I could and I was so, I got an A plus for effort. I mean, 40 day fast, I kept doing them. I was so little, my husband thought I would die. He said, if you keep fasting, you're going to die. You're so... I said, no, I'm doing more, and more, and more. I tried so hard. I did everything. I studied as hard as I could study. I tried as hard as I could try. I prayed as hard as I could pray. I, I cried as hard as I could cry. I ran as hard as I could run. I lived in the worst slums you could find because I thought that was the most holy thing you could do. I wouldn't eat cheese because the poor couldn't eat cheese. I wouldn't eat meat because the poor couldn't eat meat. I, I could make you all feel so guilty. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Shaba. And I was so tired that I went because, well, because my husband went to this place, you know. You're allowed to say it here, aren't you? The tea place, it's allowed. Toronto, oh, help me Jesus. Well, I went there, Chew. I wasn't allowed, but I went. And what happened? <laughs> you can see, but I, Shaba. <laughs> I, I am coherent at times in, in my country, in Mozambique. I, I'm, I'm seriously <laughs> coherent. So I, I don't get this except God told me about whoa, North Americans are big on control. <laughs> so he said, whoa, when you're in North America, whoa, this happens to me. Never happens to me in Mozambique. <laughs> so if you come there, you will see a coherent me. <laughs> Okie dokie. It's a good thing because I don't know what, what's better. <laughs> but I want to say I was very unhappy. Even though I love Jesus with all my heart, I didn't want to be a missionary anymore. But my husband, well, we, we went out to lunch once and got married. <clears throat> because that was holy too, you know. You weren't supposed to do those 
dating things. I wasn't holy, so we didn't do that. And flowers, well, that was frivolous, so we didn't do that. And um, <laughs> anything nice was, you know, not nice. And I, oh, I studied dance for years and years, but that was sin, so I quit that too. And I did everything I had. Oh, the beehive hairdo, I had that too. Oh, God, I was so holy. I had long dresses. Holy, holy, holy. I walked backwards. Holy. I went, holy. I was holy. I was so holy. It was just scary. And it wasn't even my culture. I'm from Laguna Beach. You know, I was raised in string bikinis, but the Holy Ghost people got a hold of me and made me holy. So I was suddenly holy. And I, I felt very holy. And I looked, I looked holy, and I did holy things. Holy, holy, holy. But I was sick and tired. And woo! So I went there because my husband became so nice. Because he was so holy. See, he was holy forever, holy, holy. Because he was a third-generation missionary, and they were always holy, you know. And, uh, oh, but they weren't always nice. <laughs> okay but guess what he went to the tea place which is usually what I have to call it and he went there and he became so sweet and nice that I went there and then um, well I got really touched and I saw Jesus and and wow that'll do it for you I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. That was it. I saw Jesus. He looked at me and I looked at him and I just melted. I melted all of my all of my exhaustion just melted away. And in the midst of seeing Jesus, in the midst of all of that exhaustion and all of that that wow, that's a poppy. What am I doing something wrong? I'm doing lots wrong. I'm sure, but I don't know. I who <laughs> Did you get those cards, you know, in the anointing, you put them in your door, they never work. It's probably the microphones, it's just, whoo. Anyway, whoo. <laughs> uh, what happened? I went, I went and wow, I saw Jesus and I saw, this is what happens when you're soaking in the glory. He does, he does scary things that are no longer scary. You know what he does? He takes you into this place and he shows you vision and he shows you things that it's stuff you could never ever do. He showed me tens and tens and tens of thousands of children and I was terrified. How would you feel? I had 320 children that called me mama and suddenly I'm seeing tens and tens of thousands and they're all calling me mama. I mean, oh God. I said, no, you're, that's not holy. You're always supposed to say, yes, Lord, oh, yeah. I said, no. I had 320 of them already that I picked up on the street one by one that all called me mama, that all had to eat every day, all needed clothes every day, all needed schooling every day. I had the Marxists shooting at me. I had people beating me up. I was tired. I didn't like getting shot at. I was tired. I said, God, I get a brownie point at least that I can lay at your feet on Judgment Day because I was a good missionary for 18 years. Here you go, sweet Jesus. Here's my grape. Well... It was a good grape. I tried. And guess what? Whoosh. I didn't want it. I didn't. I couldn't. But when you see his eyes, you're undone. So I got undone. I got undone, completely, totally ruined, wrecked. Boom. Blasted. Wrecked. He gave me his body. It became bread. He gave me his blood. It became drink. I gave it to all of them. They all drank and ate, and I was never afraid anymore of taking in any amount of kids, ever, 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 ever. Because he said, I died that there would always be enough. You know? He did. He did. He died that there would always be enough food for every single man, woman, and child on the face of the planet, and no one needs starve to death. He died. 
He died, he bled and died that there would always be enough and I saw that. But then came my biggest test. After this great and glorious vision and this wonderful, glorious experience of seeing Jesus and having my exhaustion ripped out of me and just, just the peace of God inside of me, I went back to my nation. Mozambique is my nation. I, I, I'm Mozambique. I know I, I'm pale, but I'm Mozambique, okay. So I go back to my nation and all hell breaks loose. You know why I'm telling you this? Whoosh, because you're at this conference and you could get really blasted and blessed by God and then all hell could break loose and what are you gonna do? Monday's coming, Monday's coming. And you've got to hold on to all that Jesus has poured into you. And you've got to learn to live in the secret place so that you have all that you need to continue in the storm. Because Monday's coming. I went back to my nation and all, everything happened. Everything, they took everything away. Everything happened. It was horrible. My husband almost died. I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. R Rollin had cerebral malaria. My daughter got terrible malaria. People were kicking our kids, throwing sticks. We lost everything, all our buildings. It was terrible. What a glorious vision. Sweet, sweet Jesus. But he's trustworthy in the midst of the storm. And then we get a letter. <laughs> you told me to share this. Here it comes. <laughs> Ooh. Okie dokie. <laughs> they always get the video, but anyway. <laughs> this is a vintage one. <laughs> I got a letter. Um, well, I preached in this big church and you know, they gave a good offering. A million dollars. That was cool. They were going to pay it in installments. <laughs> so, but then we got a letter because we needed that to build a new center. So we got this letter and it said, there's only one condition. You're not allowed to go to Toronto or Pensacola. <laughs> Now here I am, I've never even been to Pensacola, but here I am now, I'm here. <laughs> I already paid the price. <laughs> I paid the price, okay? So I'm allowed to come here now. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I paid the price. But see, Roland and I, we weren't sure, okay, were we deceived? Maybe we were deceived because, you know, we're good missionaries. We've been good holy missionaries all this time. And, you know, the letter said, do you want to roll on the floor laughing or feed hungry children? So what would you do if you were me? I mean, and, you, and the Marxists had taken all your buildings and you had all those hungry children and you just took a whole bunch more. What would you do? Well... We decided we'll get on a plane. We went back to the tea place, the forbidden city, and we, we snuck in the back door and we, and we, and we creeped up there like this. And we, we sat and Roland, Roland is the smart one. And they had this guy who was too weird. You think I'm weird? No, I'm nowhere near as weird as this guy. What well, this guy was weirder than anything you could put in any book ever. He was too weird for me. I had just defended my PhD. I had just defended it. I was angry. I looked at this guy. He had a pink ruler. He was, he was waving a pink ruler. He was eating Tic Tacs. And I said, Ten years of study. That's disgusting. Can, why do they let someone? He's stuttering. Why do they let someone stuttering stand behind the pulpit? I think I'll keep the million dollars. And my husband, 
who is the oak tree anointing. He does not shake. He does not rattle. He does not roll. He, he stands firm in the holy. He, he's just Mr. Firm. I don't think he's, he fell once. That's a whole nother story. I mean, the guy is Mr. Intellect. And I'm, I'm looking at him and I go, I think we need to get out of here. And he says, no, but he's making some sense. If you really listen, he's making some sense. I said, what planet are you on? Making sense. The guy's got a pink ruler. He's not making any sense. This is the honest truth. You won't believe how funny God is. What God, God in his majesty has the most amazing way to take a hold of us and to confound our wisdom. Now, I'm not very bright, but I try hard, okay? I mean, never mind. But I try very hard, so I'm trying to try. And I'm, I'm really, un, I'm not a happy camper, okay? I'm just like, ooh, I'm get, I need the money. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I mean, they must be right. Even though I saw Jesus, they said, I would even get blessed in a Catholic church. That's what they said. They said, you're pure, you'd get blessed in a Catholic church. You could get blessed anywhere, even in the tea place. That's what they said. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm just so pure. Ho, ho. Oh, no. So guess what happened? John calls me up right then. He goes, is there any bakers, bakers in the house from Mozambique? We're going, please, God, let there be someone else. Oh, God, we're, we're not supposed to be here. It's a million dollars. It's, her, it's all our friends that we really like. It's our whole staff. He says, come on up here. You know, Papa John, come on up here. I'm like, oh God, I'm, I'm just sweating. I'm, go I'm rolling and I look at each other and it's like, what are we gonna do? What, what are you gonna do? So we just, we just walk up there. I'm not even happy. I'm, I'm just, I'm like, if they put a pink ruler on my head, I'm gonna scream. They do that to me. Just, you know, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus all over me. <laughs> Keep me safe. Holy, holy. They, they pray for Roland. He just stands there oak tree. They pray for me. Bam. <gasps> then I start swimming in the carpet like a fish. Where's the videos? Right there, right there, watching me swim in the river. I laughed, I slobbered, I shook, I rolled, I stuck to the floor for seven days and seven nights. Seven days and seven nights. Well, I became the poster child. They got the video, of course. We lost the money. We were thrilled to lose it. Later, the pastor called us and he said, I don't have that kind of money, but I love you. And he's our biggest supporter to this day. And he is the most um, in love with Jesus man that we know. And we honor him and respect him and love him with all our hearts. And we learn that if there are people that don't agree or they're not in the same flow, that you gotta love them and bless them. And that's what we did. We just loved him and blessed him and loved him and blessed him and loved him and blessed him. And he loves and blesses us. And we're not in the same flow, but we love each other. And I want you to remember that too. When you, ah, when you go home and you're a little different, 
that you need to love and bless those that don't understand what, what thing you're in, what thing you're doing. Cho. So now I want to tell you what happened. Cho. Because sometimes you need to hear some, whoa, a few stories, don't you think? Here's the, whoa. This is, this is something really important to me. Wow, this is all about intimacy. See, I learned that in all of my effort and all of my striving that I couldn't reach a nation. I couldn't even reach a city. I couldn't even reach a town. I could not do anything because look at us. We're just silly little people that fall on the floor. We're silly little people. Why, why is it that we suddenly think maybe we could do something powerful? But what I learned is there's a secret to intimacy. There's something, there's a secret in the secret place that I learned about. I learned that it is not about my striving and my struggling. It's about my yielding and my laying down and believing who he is and who I'm not that causes everything to change. And what happened to me was I got so abandoned, so abandoned, so totally surrendered, so totally abandoned that I don't care anymore what anyone thinks. I don't care anymore where I go, what I do, what I say. All I want is to glorify Him. All I want is to be a yielded vessel. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. I don't care if, if I don't understand it. And believe me, I don't understand much of what God does. I don't understand it, but I don't care anymore. What I learned was that if I will abide in Him, then He will abide in me. I, I got to a place where I am so desperate for His presence, I'm so desperate for His touch, so desperate for His love, that I'll, do, I'll just do anything. I'm, I am, I'm like a wild woman. I'm wild about Him. I'm desperate about him. I'm so in love that I'm not normal. I'm totally not. I mean, I know that's obvious. I know. But I like it this way. Because I don't, I didn't, I didn't, um, I don't want to, whoa, I don't want to just hand him a grape. I want to hand him nations. I want to hand my king, my glorious king, nations. I want to give him nations. I want to lay down at his feet and say, here's all the ones that you let me lead into your kingdom. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. <laughs> so if that means I look foolish, that's just wonderful. Shabbat. <laughs> you know what? It's nice to be a happy missionary. I eat cheese now, too. Yeah. And listen to this. I'm the true vine. My father's the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So God, in his love, takes a big old knife, a katana. I don't know if you have that, machete. Do you use that word? That's English. Katana is not, is it? No, but anyway, a pshk, he chops at you. So he wants to chop away your pride and chop away your arrogance and chop away all the stuff that gets in the way of him. And he will do it because he's God. He wants to prune it away and he wants to do it here in this conference. He wants to do it tonight. Because tonight he wants to come with holy fire and burn away all the crud. He wants to come with his holy, all-consuming fire and get you. And get you really, really well. What happened... Um, whoa, he killed me is what happened. I remember it to this day. I'll never forget it. 
I was minding my own business, praying, minding my own business, just with God, just worshiping Jesus. Holy, holy, I was worshiping. I was loving him. And, and it was a guy, Randy Clark, and he was standing there, and, and he says, God wants to give you the nation of Mozambique. Do you want it? I didn't think. I was not thinking, okay? A normal thinking person would not have done what I did. But I did not think, okay? My heart just leapt out, and I didn't know this guy, and he didn't know me. But something happened in the spirit, and I just leapt up there, and I screamed with all my heart, yes! Well, electric shock vaults hit me all through me. I, I got fried, and then I thought, it's worse than pink rulers. These people, they have burning lights from their ceiling, and they have magnets on their floor, and they, 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 they stick people to the floor, and they burn people from the, from, the, from the top there, and it comes down, and they're very strange. And I was so frightened because I said, I'm going to die. I thought I was going to die. I was so hot. And I thought they have magnets and burning cookers. And I was so hot. I said, I am going to die. And I was screaming in church. And I don't, I mean, okay, I was Pentecostal. We used to swing from chandeliers if we had them, but we didn't have any. So we just leapt over pews. We did that. But screaming, I didn't scream in church. I was screaming. <laughs> loud I look, burned out my vocal cords burn I'm screaming I'm gonna die I'm gonna die I'm gonna die I'm gonna die God said good he said good the all-loving heavenly father who gives you a big hug sweet daddy oh he said good do you think you need air healing for that good he said good he said, I want you dead. He said that to me. And then it got worse. Betty announced it was time to go. Do you know Betty? She scared me. She's now one of my dearest friends in the whole world. But she was terrifying to me because I was so vulnerable. I thought they had magnets and cookers and now they had Betty. Magnets, cookers, and Betty. And I'm scared. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't move. And I remember my little head was crooked like this. I'm stuck to the floor. And I'm stuck there. And, and, and Randy's long gone into the, you know, having coffee. I don't know. They're gone. I'm stuck there to the floor. Everybody's gone except Betty. And the lights are out. And, and everybody's leaving. I don't know where my husband is. He's disappeared. He's left too. I'm there stuck to the floor. <laughs> dead. They're just dead. Thinking this is terrible. It wasn't nice. There was nothing nice about it. It was dreadful. Dead, just dead. Betty's coming. I can't move. I'm terrified. You think God just does nice things? Nice God, sweet little nice God. Oh, no. Sometimes he kills you. Sometimes he takes a big katana and chops your arm off. No, it's not a little trim. It's a whack, smack, bam. I don't like that. I took longer than most of you. Okay, I don't know why. Maybe I'm just more stubborn or I have more arrogance or I don't know why, but I took longer than most people. I, well, I should tell Betty's story first because she turned out to be very sweet. And she was saying, hi, sweetie. I didn't expect that. I thought I was going to get, you know, in big trouble. She goes, hi, honey, how are you? I said, I can't move, I can't move. I can move. She goes, oh, it's okay. We've seen this before. I'm like, oh, great. That makes me feel great. <gasps> she
she gets four people to carry me out. Four. They stick me in a car. They, they carry me to my room. And because I'm very stupid, I let them carry me back the next day. I don't know what made me do it. I don't know. Something went wrong in my brain. I, I let them carry me back in that place with the cookers and the magnets. And I'm there again. And they just dropped me somewhere. And they didn't think about the fact that I might need to use the loo. Nobody thought about this. No, no, no. They just thought, she's just stuck there. Maybe they're used to it. I don't know. I finally, I start crying because I need to use the loo. Okay, that's it. I wasn't crying because it was holy, holy. I needed to use the restroom. I was like, oh God, if someone doesn't come, I'm going to die. I'm going to die again. This is terrible. There's a good point to this. It's okay. It, don't get too worried. Woo. <coughs> Maybe you should get very worried. <laughs> because <laughs> your time is coming. Woo. Shaba. Okie dokie. This is what happened. I'm lying there, desperate. And God says to me, you can do nothing without me. I knew that man. Of course, I studied. I knew I've been a missionary. I know you can't accomplish the Great Commission. That got beat into me the hard way. But he said, you can do nothing without the body of Christ. Okay, listen to this. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he's like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my Father's glory. Wow. That you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Wow. It's in the Word. So I got it. It was in the Word. You can do nothing without me. I said, yes, Lord, I can see that because I can't move my finger. I can't move my head. I can't move my little toe. And I'm a type A driven pusher, kind of type A driven, straight A driving kind of a person. And I'm stuck here on the floor, unable to go to the loo. Now, if you were me, you wouldn't like that because you would like to get up and you would like to be coherent and you would like to give a good word, especially if you'd been preaching since you were 16 and spent all those years reading every church father and every doctrine and every theology and everything there was written on anything I wanted to teach about and you get reduced to lying on the floor unable to go to the loo. And you want to reach nations and you can't even lift your little finger. And you want to see the Muslims run to King Jesus and you can't even go to the bathroom. What would that do for you? Seven days and seven nights, the Lord kept me pinned to the floor. Pinned to the floor. Heavy, weighty glory pinned to the floor. And any time 
I needed anything. Someone in the body of Christ had to pick me up four at a time in humility. They had to take me to the restroom, wash my hands. I was worse than a quadriplegic. I could not even lift my finger. I could not change my clothes. I could not wipe my brow. I certainly couldn't eat. But if I needed water, someone had to pour it down my throat. Seven days and seven nights. Do you understand that God is serious about getting our attention? That he's serious about who he wants to make us? He's serious about demonstrating that we are nothing, that he is everything, and that we must be yielded vessels. He's not interested in your strength. He wants to incapacitate you. He wants to fully possess you. He wants to fully take you over and cause you to become like him. And if that means paralyzing you for a week, glory be to Jesus. What are we in such a hurry for? He comes upon us and we rush out to do our own thing again. I say if he comes upon you, say, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. And those seven days, the Lord began to speak to me. I could not speak myself. I had no ability to speak. One time I was able to whisper Ephesians to my husband who read it to me. And it was like a fiery sword went through my heart. It was a, whoa, the whole book was for my nation. At the time of that experience, whoa, I had, whoa, I had planted four churches. I don't know, 17, 18 years, four churches. Two of them were just little wobbly churches that weren't very powerful or anything. And two were kind of, all right, you know. Mm -hmm. After that time, the blind started to see. <laughs> Stick me to the floor. <laughs> more, 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 more. <laughs> I always wanted to see the blind see. Suddenly they did. Suddenly, when I put my hands on white eyes, they went from white to gray to brown. Whoosh! <laughs> Stick me to the floor, Lord incapacitate me more Lord I want to be nothing I want to be nothing I want to be nothing Lord so that you can pour your presence through me Jesus wow <laughs> guess what if you abide in him he'll abide in you if you abide in him he'll abide in you what happened was <laughs> I started to learn to live in the secret place of the Most High God. I got so addicted to His presence. I got so desperate for Him alone that, that every day I'd race, I'd race, and I'd get in my truck, and I'd drive away from 800 people who all needed me, I thought. And I learned to live in the secret place alone with my God. And I would walk and pray and seek him. And at times there's so many people pressing in on me and so many people demanding my time and so many cues and so many people that I go underwater with a snorkel to get alone with God. I do. I'm not teasing you. I get alone with God there because no one can get me in the water. And if they try, I swim faster because the secret place is more important to me than anyone on the face of the planet. Show. And I learned the power will be with me always. But guess what happened? <laughs> 
You want to hear this? Is it too late? What time? Because I can quit. You can go. All of you go. Freedom. I always say that. Freedom in the house. I hate manipulation. Freedom, freedom. Bye. Okay. Then, well, it's good, you know. I hate, don't you hate manipulation? Barf. We hate it. Go when you want. You've sat a long time already. Huh. Freedom in the house. But here's another story. Woo. I don't know. If you ask me why that happened, I haven't the foggiest. I don't know. Except, whoosh, I feel the Holy Spirit. And so it's, ooh, it happens. Listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> it's for his wow. I know, I know, I'm like a little kid, but I'm. The kingdom breaks forth for kids. What happened was, I got so completely out of my head and into my heart that when I read the book, I just believed it. That's what happened. So I read it and it said, if you, if you believe and you abide in him, you can ask for anything and it'll be given to you. And I didn't want a Mercedes. I wanted the blind to see. I, I wanted the deaf to hear. I wanted the dumb to speak. I wanted the crippled to walk. I wanted the poor to be fed. I wanted to see all the orphans in homes. I wanted to see thousands of churches and a nation run to Jesus. <laughs> I did. I wanted to see that. That's what I wanted. That's what I asked for. So what I did I, I, I just said, okay, 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 if this is true, and it is, because I know it, and I know he is what he said he is, then I'm going to believe he is who he says he is. And I'm going to step out, and I'm going to do this stuff, because he said I can. And I know I'm silly little me, but I know he's a great big God, so I'm going to step in this place of knowing that I'm a daughter of the Most High God, and I'm going to believe that he is who he says he is. And suddenly, everything started to happen. It's true. It's true. We went from one church. Oh, it's scary. There's so many thousands. I don't even know. Shabababa. The last we heard, it's about 6,000 in four and a half years. Cool. Cool. Guess why? We believe the book. We live in the secret place. All fruitfulness flows out of intimacy. It's true. It's all true. It's all true. Yes, you have to die. Yes. So what? Get over it. Let it happen quickly. Maybe you'll be have a quick death. Maybe yours is in seven days. Maybe you're just a quick, you know, you're fast and you're just more together or not together whatever it is that means it's shorter time i hope for you than me i was just more difficult than you i'm sure but guess what happened this is so cool guess what i would do funny things now i do them every day i do i just do i walk around the dump and I believe God's gonna do miracles. So I go down and there's this little guy in a hut and I leave my 70 some year old father and mother, I mean, he's almost 80. I drag them to the dump. They just got to Mozambique, it's their first day. I say, I'm bringing you to my favorite spot. Come on, daddy. Come on, sweet daddy. And daddy's turning and walk and he's just like, this is your favorite. He said, don't leave me here. I said, but dad, these are all my friends, and they're like bandits. They look like bandits, man. Some of them still are, but some are saved. I said, Dad, it's okay. Just, just hang out with my friends. I'm going to go pray for someone. It's just very close. So we walk, 
and I leave my dad and mother in the dump. I can't believe I'm doing this. And, and I, I'm walking, and I walk for an entire hour because in Africa, it's always just over, just, just right over here, just a rest a little, just right here. Well, it was an hour in the dump, no water. I left them, my parents there, right off the plane from Laguna Beach. Oh, oh. Ocean front view, you know, what am I thinking? I don't know. I'm walking, and here's this guy, and he's sitting, and his mother, she takes me, my, we, we all call each other mama, 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 so mama takes mama, and we go and pray for papa, so here's papa, and he's lying there, he's paralyzed, she said, I wanted you to pray for my husband, well, she didn't tell me he was paralyzed, but what's the difference, a headache, paralyzed, what's the difference, I didn't see it was the difference. Why are we so, woo, there's a big miracle. Woo, there's a little one. I don't know. Not. It's God. God heals headaches. God heals paralytics. So I just go, and he's paralyzed. He's sitting there cutting paper, you know. I said, well, God, this is, you've got to do something. And he said, baptize him. I told you, I'm Pentecostal holiness. I used to be. I know I'm wearing trousers and everything. I wrecked the whole thing. But anyway, I had been. I had studied that way, and I was wanting a river. The thing is, the poor don't have rivers. So I wanted at least a bathtub, but the poor don't have bathtubs. So I wanted a lake. They don't have a lake. They have marsh. It was too dirty. So I said, what am I going to do, God? Because my theology says we got to dunk them in, you know, put them under. I love the Ezekiel 47 Ooh, down there, you know, and, and there's nothing. There's just nothing. I said, do you, can anybody get a cup of water? It took her half an hour to find somebody with a cup of water. Okay, give you a picture. I, I just don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning to abide in the vine, and I'm hearing the Father say to me, baptize this man. And so I lead him to Jesus, and in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, I just pour this cup of water over this man's head. And then I say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And he had little shriveled little feet and little shriveled little legs. And the man right in front of me, his legs just go. And he gets up and he's walking. And we're walking around the house like this. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking in the dump. Hooray for God. No video cameras. No bam on the head. Nothing. In the dump, the glory of God being manifest for the poor. Wow! If God wants to burn all of the crud out of me, burn, 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 Lord Jesus. Burn, Father, burn it away until the mute speak and the cripple walk until the poor are fed until nations run to you until there's tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands running to the master and the king whoa i love him i love him i love him more than life oh, oh. Could I tell you one more story? And then, and then I'm going to pray for this to happen to you. Well, isn't it worth it? What's your destiny? I know some people say, well, we don't need an experience. Well, if you might, would you like one? I mean, maybe you don't need one. Okay, ciao, ciao. Hoo -hoo. Have fun. Be. I. Some people said God's not emotional. If he made you, he must be. He said, we're created in his image. He, he weeps and he laughs. And he, he's desperate for his bride. See, I'm desperate to bring in the bride. 
I'm desperate to bring in the bride and I don't care what it takes. I want to abide in him. And I want to say, Lord, anytime you need to cut anything out of me, cut it away, Lord, because I want to ask whatever, whatever and see you do it. This is the final bit with the final story. And then I'm going to ask, I don't know where we're going to go because I hope all of you want this. <laughs> I know it's scary, but it's good. Do you want to bring a little grape on the judgment day? Or do you want to bring in the multitudes? You know, if I, I know I should encourage you. You know, Stacy said that God used her to make other women feel better about their house. Well, God uses me to make you feel better about yourself. Because if God could use a silly little person like me who falls down when she's trying to speak and looks so ridiculous and stutters, then certainly he could use you. You should be encouraged by this. Really, it must be my ministry. <laughs> Encourage. You could go, if God could use her to lead hundreds of thousands of people to Jesus, well then... Maybe he could use me. Yes, maybe he just could. Because he's God. And you're not. Hooray. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> hooray. <laughs> oh. oh. As the fathers loved me, so I've loved you. That's it. I'm confident. That's it. I know I'm loved. I'm loved by the Father. He thinks I'm neat. That makes me happy. He likes me. He likes me. He loves me. I know this. Now remain in my love. If you obey my, my, my commands, you'll remain in my love. Just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. Love's the point. Love's the point. Love's the point. Your ministry's not the point. You're just called to love. I've told you this so that your joy, my joy, may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this that he laid down his life for his friends. You're my friends if you do what I command. So it's time to lay our lives down. It is. It's time. You know, he's, he's, just, he's just wanting to take you to a place of total surrender, just giving your life away, giving your life away. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business is. Instead, I've called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I've made known to you. Wow, the mind of Christ. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Well, I've been reduced to love. Now, um, that message Pat gave today, you know, is one of the most powerful messages on the cross I've ever heard. And it's, you know, it's, it's all about love. It's the love test. It's the love test. It's all about love. It's all about love. It's all about love. People are not projects. Your ministry is not the point. It's all about love. You just need to love like Jesus and be like Jesus, act like Jesus, walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, feel like Jesus. That's the whole thing. And the only way you become like that is to live in the secret place, guys. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow, this is the, the final story. You know, I want to ask you guys, um, 
if you wouldn't mind not not to stand but you know to come and kneel or sit it's a bit this is not the calm anointing this one we have the calm anointing we have the sweet anointing this is not that this one's a bit ballistic okay <laughs> all righty but it is <laughs> it's the fire anointing and when this one comes and then, then people get the fire burns and it's really heavy duty but it's for your good and it's the fire of God and he will confirm and touch and I don't know if we need to move some chairs or what we need to do or how we're gonna we're gonna but we what we want to do is we want to focus on Jesus we're gonna lift our hands and we're gonna ask the fire of God to come he's gonna do it his way and um, he's gonna burn out a lot of stuff and he's gonna get rid of a lot of stuff because you're predestined to fruitfulness um, I've been I was told by these um, missionaries that the three provinces in Mozambique Nyasa, Nampula, Cabo Delgado could not be reached Whoa! they told me they could not be reached because they were Muslim provinces they said that it took them seven years to lead 27 people to Jesus and that those provinces could not be reached. And I said, but by the power of God, those provinces can be reached. And I decided that wh whether it meant life or death to me, that I would go and I would stand in front of an, a, an angry Muslim crowd and I would preach the gospel. And I stood in front of a Muslim crowd that was angry. It took, we had policemen there. They were angry. They were yelling. They were screaming. And there were thousands of them. And I, I stood in front of them knowing that I could die, that I may die, that I may live. And I didn't care. All I wanted was that those people would know the love of Christ Jesus, my bridegroom king. Because I don't consider my life important. I consider it nothing but for the knowledge of knowing him and leading people into his kingdom and I asked the power of God to come and healings began to take place in that in that group healings eyes and ears and legs and feet and stomachs and heads and over a thousand Muslims in one night bowed their knee just in one night in Nampula province Whoa! God loves them but he make he wants you dead he wants you dead alive to him dead to you that your life you don't care anymore you don't care you don't care what people think you don't care if anyone knows your name you don't care about any of it all you care about is loving him and making his love known well I want you to just close your eyes um, just close your eyes and lift your hands I'm going to pray that the holy fire of God comes only thing is please don't stand up because it's not a stand up <laughs> Okay, Shabababa. Okay, Lord, you said tonight you're going to do this, Lord. You said tonight, Lord, you're going to do this. So, God, for your kingdom's sake, for the sake of your kingdom, I pray for your fire to fall, Lord. For the sake of your kingdom, Lord, let the fire of God fall over this room. For the sake of your kingdom, Lord, increase your fire. Let it fall all over this room. For the sake of your kingdom, for the sake of your kingdom, close your eyes, focus on Jesus. For the sake of your kingdom, 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 for the sake of your kingdom fire on them Lord burn up the sacrifices this is a night of altar this is an altar a holy altar where the fire of God will burn the sacrifices 
and his presence will come upon the sacrifices. Let it come, let it come, let it come. Where are those who will give their life away? Let the fire fall, let the fire fall, let the fire fall. All over the room, Lord, let it fall in the back, Lord. Let it fall in the balcony, Lord. Let it fall in the aisles, Lord. More, God. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Let your fire fall. Shh. All over the room. All over the room, Lord. We want your fire. We want your fire. We want your fire. Burn away our sin. Burn away anything that keeps us, Lord, keeps us from being like you. God, we want to see nations, 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 nations burn, 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 burn for your kingdom. It's for your kingdom, Jesus. It's for your kingdom. Take this. This is his holy, 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 holy glory. Fall on your people, Lord. Take them for your kingdom. 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 Oh, cry out for it. Cry out for it. Cry out for it. Cry out for it. Cry out. Cry out. We need your holy fire. Cry out. Cry out. Oh. We must have your fire. Whoa. We must have your fire. Whoa. one desire is to be holy, set apart. Let there be impartation for healing, healing mantles. They're healing mantles, healing mantles, healing mantles in the room, healing mantles, healing mantles, healing mantle in the room. Some of you, Shabbat, there's healing mantles. When you heard this story, the blind hear, the dumb speak, the cripple walk. Some of your hearts leapt with joy. The Lord's passing out healing mantles. He is, he is, he is, he is. There's impartation. Healing mantles. Ho! Oh, more fire, Lord. Fire. Where are those who lay their life down for the King of glory? Where are those who will go into battle? Whoa! Where are those who will go into battle? Where are those who will die for the king and live for the king? Where are those who don't care? Where are those who will say, my life is fully given, totally over to you, Jesus? More, Lord, let your holy fire come. Show fire on him. Fire, fire, fire. More, more. God, we must have more. God, let your holy fire burn. Chop away. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, Lord, chop. Chop, Lord. Go ahead, chop. Oh! Chop away, burn away, Jesus, anything that does not bring you pleasure. Jesus, Jesus, here we are, Lord. We are holy sacrifices. Oh, this is a night. I got Ezra 3, Ezra 3, Ezra 3. It's time to build a temple, a new temple, an altar. There's an altar here tonight, and the Lord is looking for sacrifices. Sacrifices. Oh! Oh! More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Holy Ghost. How desperate are you? How desperate are you? Are you desperate for nations? Are you desperate for the king? What do you want? What do you want? Shabbat, burn, 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 burn. Fire on them. Holy fire, holy fire. God, we must have pure hearts. We must have pure hearts. Burn, 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 burn. burn. Burn, sweet holy Jesus. Burn, Lord. Let your glory fall. We must have you, Jesus. We want your fire, Lord. 
joy consuming fire. Our hearts one desire is to be holy, 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 set apart for you. Set apart for you, Jesus. We don't care what it costs. We count our life as nothing. Rubbish, rubbish compared to the great knowledge of knowing you, of serving you, of giving you all that we are. More Holy Spirit, more increase your fire tonight. Let there be impartation tonight. Let there be an impartation for people to take nations, Shaba, nations, nations, nations for our inheritance, nations for our inheritance. Holy, Shaba, ba, 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 ba. Holy God, Holy God, Holy God, fire. We must have your holy, holy presence. Lord, the Lord never comes on empty altars, but on altars that are full, he always comes. This is a full altar, and his presence is here. More, Lord, increase, increase, Lord. He's handing out, I hear it again, healing mantles. He'll confirm those healing mantles. If you're sensing that, just lift your hands. The Lord's going to confirm the healing mantles. If you're sensing that, more Lord, healing mantles, 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 healing mantles. Whoa, where are they? There's a healing mantle on you. There's a healing mantle, and you too. Wow, this is awesome. Right, the two of you here, right here. Powerful healing. I know it hurts. It's holy though. Don't be afraid. Show! Help me pray. <laughs> Whoosh! Help me pray. Ministry teams available. Help, help, help. Please worship, worship, worship. Ho, ho, ho. Healing, healing. Ho, ho, ho. Fire, fire, fire. This is the fire of God. It's a loving, He's loving you to death. He's loving you to death. Shh. Whoa. And he'll kiss you to life. Just release the ministry team. Oh, come Holy Ghost more. Cry out for more. Cry out for more. We must have more. We must have more. We must have more. Jesus, sweet Jesus, we want nations, Lord. We don't care what it takes. Lord, another wave of your presence, Lord. Shh. All 
over the room, Lord. Whoa. Touch your people. Touch your people, Lord. Whoa. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, sweet Holy Ghost. With your sweet holy fire. Lord, our heart's one desire is to be holy. Holy, holy, set apart for you. Lord, not in not in the holiness, Lord, the things that we wear or don't wear, but in you, in you, in you, in you, in you. Wow. More God. More, Lord. More. More, Lord. Give it to them. They've got to have more. They've got to have more. More. consuming fire and he's pouring out his holy love which is all consuming love we get transformed forever forever and ever and ever and ever we're transformed by the love of God he loves you to death and he kisses you to life so come, Holy Spirit. Come, sweet Holy Spirit. Take control of these precious women. Take full control. Burn holy fire on your sacrifices tonight. Oh God, whoa, we love you. We love you. We love you. Oh, I ask you, Lord, for your, your heavy glory, that anointing, Lord, to fall on these ones now. That heavy glory, Lord. The kabod of God. All over the room, Lord, let the kabod of God fall. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory. Oh, Jesus, we want to carry it. Unless, unless you rest upon us, Lord, we have nothing to carry. We can't even bring you a grape, Lord, unless you rest upon us, Lord. But God, if you would rest upon us, we would ask, Lord, for that which brings you pleasure. Lord, we would not ask for riches. Lord, we would ask for the souls. Lord, we would not ask for fame. We would ask for the poor. We would ask for the Muslims and the Hindus and the Buddhists and the New Agers. We would ask for souls, Lord. We would cry out for souls, Lord. We would say we don't care how foolish we look. We just want you. We just want you. Come, sweet Holy Ghost, fill this vessel. Fill, 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 sweet Holy Ghost. 
Let your manifest glory fall like sweet spring rain. Lord, as your fire burns away, Lord, let your glory come, let your glory come. Take us into a place, God, where we are abandoned lovers of the Most High God, where we're not afraid anymore, where we will die for you. Lord, where we're so in love, we wouldn't dream of even getting near sin. We're so in love that we don't ever need a list of what we shouldn't do because we're, we're so in love. We're so in love that we wouldn't want to ever do anything that would not bring you pleasure. Burn away all the selfishness and arrogance. Burn away pride, Lord. Burn away, I'll do it my way. Burn it away, God. Burn away our own wisdom. Burn it away. Chop it off. Chop it off. And let your glory come. Now, some of you, there's just, um, well, the Lord's just, I just hear like a blanket. There's a blanket of um, his glory being poured out. Just, it's like a blanket that's heavy and it's, it's holy. It's a heavy, holy glory of the Lord. And it's, it, it represents anointing. And it's resting upon many of you who have, who have just really abandoned yourself to him and said, I don't, I don't care what it cost. I don't care. I must, I must have you and I must bring in the lost. See, it's never, it's never just soaking or running. It's always living in the secret place and calling in the lost. It's always both, always, 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 because you have the mind of Christ. And Christ's mind is that he died for the whole world. He died for the whole world. He suffered, he was tortured and crucified for the whole world. And he is allowing some of you to feel a little bit of what he feels for the lost. He's going to allow some of you tonight just to feel a little bit of what he feels for the lost, for the dying, for those who are without Jesus in this world. So I ask for a, an anointing Lord of open eyes to see the lost tonight, God. God, why, why do we submit ourselves to this holy fire, Lord, if it's not to be purified? If it's not, Lord, to become lovers? If it's not to bring in the broken and the lost to you, Lord? We submit ourselves upon this altar as living sacrifices, Lord. We submit ourselves to be burned by your holy fire, O oh God, that we might bring in the broken that we might live in the holy place, that we might have a mind of Christ, that we may become like you in nature, that we would participate, participate, Lord, in your nature. Oh God, let them, let them, let there be a holy, a holy anointing, Lord, of I salve, upon the eyes of your people now, Lord. I sav. I'm asking for I sav. I sav. I sav. Ask God to let you see. Would you ask him? Let me see. The first three blind people that I prayed for that finally saw, after a year of them not seeing, they finally, three of them saw in a row. Their names were all Ida. My name is Mama Ida in Portuguese. It's Mama Ida. And whoa, the Lord said, I want to open your eyes. And I want to open the eyes of the church. And I'm asking you, Lord, tonight to open blind eyes. 
eyes that have not seen the lost, eyes that have not seen your glory, eyes that have not known your word is true, eyes, Lord, that have not understood that the only direction in ministry is lower still. Oh God, I ask for ISAF tonight. I ask for holy ISAF to be given tonight. I ask for an impartation, an impartation, Lord, of clear vision, vision, visionaries. I ask that people would see the lost all over this room that they would see your glory all over this room, that they would see your lovely face all over this room, that they would see your face in the poor, they would see your face in the word, they would see your face, Lord, in vision, in dream. Lord, let your people see. Open blind eyes, I pray. Open blind eyes, open blind eyes, and open deaf ears, and open the mouths of the mutes tonight. Some of you have been mute. You didn't, you were unable to speak. The Lord's giving you his tongue to speak his word. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Wow.